Hi, welcome to my part two of my video covering Thunderbolt, both in terms of devices that work under Thunderbolt and the adapter that I'm going to add to my PC over here, my VM server to allow me to use the Thunderbolt connectivity at the highest performance level. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video is put this in. But I did wanna tell you what I did here. I used my laptop, which by the way, happens to come with a Thunderbolt port sitting right over here. And it's got this symbol and it's USB C size as usual. It doesn't say whether it's Thunderbolt 3 or 4. I even looked in the documentation for it and it doesn't specify it. It doesn't really matter. The speed is the same. What I will show here right now on the screen is the performance that I got using Crystal Disk Mark. As you can see, it did quite well. It didn't hit the full 40 gig, but it's definitely up there and uh, will actually looks better than like a uh, PCI E3 M2 drive in terms of being directly connected to a motherboard. That speed is definitely acceptable. This thing did get a little bit warm and I'm going to try to test it for the temperature once I get it working connected up to the Thunderbolt on this PC and I'll see how warm it is. It, it was nothing that I couldn't hold on to, believe me. I would estimate that it was maybe 95 degrees at the most, but we'll see. I'll put my temperature reader on it and see what it looks like. So anyway, let's get started. I'm going to take this card out. As I said in part one, I'm going to install it. There's a slot all ready to go in here for it. And then we'll see how it all performs. Okay, let's get started. Okay, pretty straightforward to put a card in here. I'm gonna remove this one slot. You're supposed to put the card, the uh, Thunderbolt card on a motherboard that supports it in the very last slot. So that's this last times four slot back there. So that's where it's gonna go. So I'm taking off the PCIe shield. Got the card here. There we go. Now it looks like it has, uh, yeah, it has protectors on it. I'm gonna take this off. Go ahead and get this all off of here. Looks like it's on both sides. There we go. And there's the card. Just got to put it in this way. Oh, there's one on the side here too. Now, what I'm going to have to do is put some cables on here first. Let me get that done preliminarily, and that way I don't have to worry about it. Now, I do recommend you try to get these cables connected to the motherboard before you put the card in. So the, US the Thunderbolt one is very small, and it goes right in front of where the slot is. So we got to be very careful with this one. It's right in over here. Very hard to see. Let's see, the, pin, the empty pin is on the back. So it has to go in like this, way back here. You gotta get it in there first. And then of course the USB one is not much easier. <laughs> It goes in right off to the side here. Make sure I got the missing pin in the right place. So hopefully your case doesn't require all those USB headers because you're gonna be losing one of the headers which is two of the ports. And that does it. There we go. That's the one cable that's in, the Thunderbolt cable. It's also got a USB 2.0 cable. I guess that's how the software communicates with it at some level. Put that one in over here. Now I'm going to also have to put a power cable in here, a PCIe 6-pin. So I'm going to have to run a cable around the back in order to... Uh, to get that to work fine, okay? I don't have that handy right now, but let me get it in first. I can put that last because it goes in the top. So let's get this card in here. Into the slot. There we go, finally got it in. Let's seat it all the way down. And we can secure those cards. I had to take this little piece out. 
let's put it back in again. This just has uh, two USB 2 headers on it. So I'll tighten both these screws together. Tighten them down. And there we are, the card is installed. So the next step now is to, oh, I gotta put this power thing on. So let me go and find a connector for that and I'll put that on. Okay, I had to run a new cable for this six pin connector using the VGA connector, as you can see here. And that's what'll go into here and provide the extra power. Okay, there we go. I'll do some wire dressing later. So now it's completely installed and we can uh, try the software. Okay, the first thing we need to do is go into the BIOS and we have to go into advanced mode. And then under advanced, we hit advanced again. We go down this list and here we go, Thunderbolt. We click on that. Right now, discrete Thunderbolt TM support is disabled. So I will enable that. Okay. Let's see if that works. I will do a save and exit. And it looks like it's going to enable Thunderbolt support. And controller zero, control, okay. Okay, now I'm in Windows. I have the DVD loaded. Let me see what we get. This should be the drivers for the Thunderbolt controller. Let's see what we get here. I hear it cooking. And it does say motherboard support CD. I'll say autoplay. I'll run it. Okay. So we got okay I'll install it pretty loud the DVD reader that is really loud still installing The installation is complete. I'll have to restart my computer. Okay, I'll say yes to that. Okay, now we're in Windows. Let me uh, plug in the device and see what we get. I'm going to go into the first Thunderbolt port. Oh, pops open. Okay, good. Good sign. Let me run Crystal Disk Mark. Let's see what we got. Yep, everything's good. Let's see what kind of speed we get here. I'll speed ahead, of course, at this point. Well, that concludes it, but honestly, I'm not that impressed. I'm going to go ahead and take a temperature reading of the unit so that we can see what it looks like, and I'll put it up on the screen here. It's 102, 103F, so it's, it's pretty warm. But again, it's easy to handle. It's not super hot. Let me switch ports and see what happens with this. Let me go to the, um, the secondary port, so I'm going to have to release the device from this one using the standard USB device release. Okay, it should be free. So I'm going to switch over to the second port, see if that makes a difference. I'm not letting it cool down, so I'm not sure if that's going to make a difference or not. How about I just uh, let it cool down for a few moments and I'll come right back, okay? Okay, let's hook this guy up to the second port and see what we get. Okay, it seems to come up the same as usual. Let's run Crystal Disk Mark and see what it looks like. Still drive H. And of course, once I start it, I'll probably zoom ahead at this point. But we'll see how it goes. Well, 
Well, it's all done. It's not very impressive. It's about the same as uh, the first port, so no real difference there. Let me take a temperature reading of this. I'll put it up on the screen here. It's about 104 degrees. Let me take a picture of that. Okay, so uh, that pretty much concludes my testing of this. Nowhere near as impressive as my HP laptop, my HP Omen. A little disappointing because uh, you would think something connected through PCI and a high-end computer like this one would would do well. But uh, maybe there's some limitations I don't know about. I did check the manual while I was waiting for this one to complete and it doesn't show much. There is a tool, but it doesn't seem to have options to improve performance. So anyway, thank you for watching and I will talk to everybody very soon. Take care.